Okay. First of all, <clears throat> guys, I think you did a great job. Um, there's a lot of really talented uh, trainers on this list. Just the fact that you noticed the breakdown and the TVAs, um, you were able to call tight hip flexors, things like that's really impressive. Um, my uh, my analysis of this whole thing is is uh, a little different, but it's pretty similar. So I'm going to try and go along here and, and explain where my thought process is coming from. I'm I'm big uh, into scapular, uh, and I think that um, Daniel's breakdown is highly scapular because of what he does as a pitcher. He's probably throwing so many balls that he has some some severe. Um, adhesions on a serratus anterior, uh, which is not allowing it to work right. So as weak as it might be, he's going to need either manual therapy or um, neuromuscular therapy or just a heck of a lot of hot yoga to just stretch and stretch and stretch and get that able to be used again. Um, when he gets up here and he stops being a wimp, you'll see massive scapular winging uh, where the scapulars are basically just popping off his back. Uh, I think a lot, like I said, the breakdown is the serratus anterior, um, and the lats are so tight on him that he's he's having trouble getting into protraction to begin with. I don't think that Daniel at this point would have been able to protract even just in a push-up position, just because uh, he was so tight in the posterior uh, with the lats and rhomboid tightness, and so uh, unable to use his anterior serratus that he the protraction of the scapula was just basically impossible. Now this whole lumbar curve thing got going on. Um, I think that that's all related to to the inability to protract the scapula, because if you look at people that can really really protract the scapula and depress it well, their lumbar curve disappears at that point of protraction because. Once you reach that full point of protraction, it's so much easier to engage the abdominals because um, you've got the lat tension and then you've got the serratus anterior uh, strength pushing the scapulas down the side of the thoracic cavity. So um, now when he flips over on his back here, this is when you guys might disagree with me. I don't really think he has weak hamstrings at all. Um, and I think that he has glute function as well. But what I do think is that his TFL and his IT band are so ridiculously tight uh, and I because he can't get into hip extension like there's just no way this kid is locked in the inability to, to, to go into hip extension um, quad tightness maybe big muscle groups to be honest with you don't really usually get very tight it's tightness is from a weakness most of the time and you guys might not agree with me but what I've found in training is that most of the time when I strengthen tight areas they uh, they become much more flexible. Um, here, like I said, he can't even fire his... Um, I mean, he's, he's basically sitting up with his hip flexors right now. I mean, he's not even using his abs. He's not even getting into flexion extension of the trunk. He's just locked into what I would say... Um, and see how his legs splay out like that? When he comes up, that's a prime example that his TFL, his hip flexors, and, and rectus uh, femoris are so tight that that boy couldn't... Ki- he couldn't keep his knees together to save his life at that point. His his femurs would pop out of his sockets. The, the femur would seriously pop out of the acetabulum if you tried to squeeze those knees together right there. Um, so, and then on top of that with the lumbar curve issue, um, because he can't get into hip extension, and because his lats are so tight, his erector spinae and his thoracolumbar fascia have totally shortened. Uh, so, the 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 only hope that this guy ever has of um, actually being a, f- a functional athlete. I mean, he's a good athlete. This kid is. I mean, he was signed for two point. I don't know, it's two point some million. But uh, but being a functionally like able to functionally use his body, you know, entirely. Um, the only chance of that happening are is if we can unrestrict those the hip flexors and get him to engage the glutes and hamstrings uh, more neurologically and the only way that's going to happen is if this kid stretches and I've told him time and time and time again to do hot yoga um, because I think that's it's just a, an amazing stretch of the entire body it's like the key that unlocks the body in my opinion but uh, we really in training pounded his scapulas 
and it wasn't even till like some of those video clips that you saw still he was still had scapular weakness i mean that kid did so much protraction of the scapula and so many uh scapular depression and, and scapular pull-ups and everything like that I, he hated he hated training that stuff but t- by the time he's done uh, you should see him he's a he has almost full control over his entire uh, scapular area Protraction, retraction, depression, elevation, uh, everything he's got control over. And um, right here, real quick, just do you see? Oh, man, I wish I could back up. He was he was relying on anterior shoulder strength and triceps. He he, he and he and he's such a good compensator that he was able to make me think for a second that he was able to keep a flat back, but he wasn't. He was pushing through his anterior shoulder and lifting his butt up in the air. So here, uh, look, he, he's having trouble depressing the scapulas during this movement. His still has elevation, but it's getting better. Uh, his hamstrings working, um, because that's actually a hard exercise if you don't have hamstring strength. Here, I mean, he clearly has hamstring strength, but like, look, he can't even get into hip extension. He's locked in that little forward thing because his hip flexors. Are, watch this. He can't go down. He's stuck. His hip flexors are so tight, um, and I would say his TFL is so tight and his glutes are tight too his glute uh glute medius and uh glute maximus are very very tight so um daniel has everything it takes to be an athlete it's just his flexibility is ridiculous uh and um his single leg stability you see the in, the inability to stabilize on a single leg like that you can look at him it's it's that tfl is so locked up that uh his uh when he goes to sit down like that that his, his femur's not w- rolling the right way and that's the tabulum here this is a protraction exercise driving with the glutes and the quads uh, you see his knees splay out they're splaying out still he's still even i mean i did a lot of therapy on him his tfl was, was grizzle uh and i just just dug it out and dug it out and dug it out he finally I mean, he can actually do uh knee ups with his knees together now finally but um, this is what you're dealing with when you have professional athletes. They come in there and, you know, they think they've got it all together. And, I mean, you got to watch this stuff. So I uh, hope this has been helpful for you guys. And if you – oh, here, this is classic. He can't get his arms over his head. All right, so his lats are still so tight. And I, this is neurological. He can get his arms over his head at this point with our training, but he just doesn't want to because his brain's so used to keeping those, those arms in tight because his lats were so tight. Uh, but uh, here he is saying thank you. And um, anyways, I hope this was helpful for you guys. I really, uh, really think you did a great job trying to figure out what was going on in the blog. And um, the spider training DVD will show you how to actually completely maximize scapular function. So 